Apple OS 26 was shown off at WWDC 25 and kind of blew us away. A lot of people are asking, is the iPad going to actually be replacing my Mac now? And I think kind of, yeah, for some people, but it's not an outright Mac killer. Apple wouldn't want it to be. Okay, so where is this coming from? iPads have been getting the Apple M-Class chips since 2021's iPad Pro, then it migrated to the iPad Air line. And it has been kind of ridiculous to have that type of hardware on a tablet that's a glorified Netflix machine. Now, don't get me wrong, some people learned to work with the iPads self-imposed limitations, some even enjoyed how its one app at a time approach limits distractions and forces focused work. But let's be real, an iPad Pro that costs as much as a MacBook Pro when you add the keyboard but can't render files in the background, uh, that's a joke. So Apple took note, the new iPad OS 26, which should have a stable build coming out this September, comes with a real pointy mouse pointer, the ability to freely float apps and arrange them in Windows, an actual menu bar, and the Files app that has been reworked to allow you to arrange files based on multiple attributes, and the preview from Mac that lets you open PDFs and images and annotate them in place. That is a lot, and it has been a long time coming. iPadOS was kind of okay for multitasking thus far, but only kind of and only okay. You could do slide over and split view and there's the stage manager UI, which honestly looks confusing and operates very clumsily. I imagine not a lot of people learned that one. With these huge new changes to iPadOS 26, I expect stage manager will be phased out at some point and I expect a lot of people will consider an iPad as their main compute machine from now on. However, there are still downsides. If you thought the Mac ecosystem was kind of locked down and limiting, the iPad is doubly so. For one, there's the very simple fact that iPad apps can still only come from the App Store. A Mac still behaves a lot like a computer, so as long as you can download a GMG from a trusted website, you can install the program. No, this is not a rebellion against the App Store, it's a simple fact that there are a lot of indie developers and a lot of open source projects out there that can be valuable for your work, or your game time, and you download them off of free sharing sources. Music programs and plugins, video templates, the wine wrapper, so you can play old Windows games on Mac, just as an example. For a very certain user, this will be perfectly fine on the iPad. You can get your Google Docs, you can get DaVinci Resolve from the App Store, or LumaFusion, Photoshop, Lightroom, or Cubasis and Apple Logic Pro. Just Take the tablet anywhere, flick it open and go. That's a digital nomad's dream come true, especially with the battery life. With its new background rendering capabilities, your exports will not crash because you let the screen go to sleep or you accidentally tapped a notification that opened up the email app instead of your video editor. Problem number two is iPadOS and its file system. No, I'm not talking about the files app, which it took five years, but now looks usable. I am talking about how iPad and its apps handle files. For most third-party apps, there's no such thing as editing a file in place. Since it's a closed off ecosystem, each app has its own sandbox, so to speak. And if it's an image editor or an audio editor or a video editor, it needs to create a copy of the file it's gonna use in its own sandbox to use it. Now, video editors out there that create proxy files will be familiar with this process and pretty much see it as a non-issue. But remember, I'm talking about every type of app for everything you do. What if I have a complex chain of uh, product production, uh, editing a file from one app to the next, especially with how iPadOS has highly specialized apps for one thing or another? Well, I'm bound to leave a file copy from one app's sandbox to another to the next. 
Again, you can do housekeeping, go back and delete your old projects when you're done. But I think that for complex workflows, edits and large projects, you will still want to sit down with that MacBook or desktop PC. So who will the new iPad OS 26 be good for? People who do hybrid work. Hopping from the home office to the work office will be quicker, more portable, easier than before. Artists, architects and designers have been using the iPads when meeting with clients up until now and I expect that won't change. Bloggers on websites like me, you can finally use the built-in preview app to resize images exactly to the pixels you want, which it's 2025. Thus far, I needed to download a third-party app on my iPad just to do that, which yes, means more image copies on my storage. Video editors will now be tempted to jump to iPad. At the very least, you can create the outline skeleton of a project and cut up that B-roll while waiting for a flight or having coffee across the street. And of course, those who like to use the iPad for their free time to binge Netflix while doing the laundry, it won't lose its sparkle for that. The iPad will replace the MacBook for those users that figure that a MacBook Air is enough for their needs, I think. Which leads me to wonder if the MacBook Air is due to be phased out or completely reimagined. However, there's still plenty of room and need for the MacBook Pro in the world. I think Apple is striking a good balance with iPad OS 26. It's finally useful, but not too useful. I did not see you drop a sub, so do that and I'll see you next time. Bye!